Gnostic teaching. The devil's scarecrow to keep you from the mind of Christ in you. Now for those who may not understand my use of the devil's scarecrow. God's cornfield, resurrected corn, the living word, is available to all. But there are those that take what they might call the living word of God, or what the Holy Spirit told them, or following a spirit other than the Holy Spirit, who clearly says his teachings aren't his own, and he doesn't speak of himself, he points you to Christ, who pointed you to the Father. And the mind in the Son of Man, Jesus, was Christ in him, which he was, the only begotten Son of God, begotten, not created. I believe in the Trinity. Gnostics do not accept the Trinity. I'm not a Gnostic. And I get labeled a Gnostic because I'm pointing people to the mind of Christ in you, where it's hidden all the wisdom and knowledge of God, this treasure chest that's hidden in earth and vessels that the excellency would be of God, not of man. It reaches beyond our carnal mind, of what Paul called the flesh, our particular race, our cultures, our secular and religious opinion, and opinions of male and female. Paul reached beyond that to something he said the eyes have not seen nor the ears heard. And it's revealed. These things are written that you might know, but it has to have the Holy Spirit Take that dead letter of the Bible, Old and New Testament, which comes out in all my videos, and resurrect it to life. We have a more sure word of prophecy that we should pay attention to until the day dawns, the day saw rises in our heart. That's Christ, the mind of Christ in you. You get past all your second religious opinions, race, cultures, and creeds, and gender, and you begin to understand but the Holy Spirit's task was to undo what's been done to all of us. We're men of flesh. We're carnal mind. Thus, are leaning to our own understanding. And in all, all our ways are not acknowledging the fact that the mind of Christ is placed in all that's been hidden since time began. And everything I bring out in my videos is pointing to this fact. How the mind of Christ is all and in all has been there since the dawn of history. Hidden in the Old Testament, manifest in the New Testament, the mystery of Christ is in you, and the mind of Christ is in you. I mean, I labor at this, and if we're doing this, you get labeled a Gnostic. Well, half the time, people don't even know. They get cornered, so they just come out with slur words and then judgments against you, giving you labels that they don't even understand themselves. So I'm going to get into this matter of Gnostic. You can do it for yourself. You don't need me to do this. Just type in the word Gnostic in a Google search and you'll get all that you need to know what the Gnostics believe. We get into what they call the Apocrypha books. This, uh, there's, I couldn't even pronounce the word. The Apocrypha books is the Apocrypha story is probably not true, although it's often told and believed by some people to have happened. No. An apocrypha story, it's a good story, but I dare say it's an apocrypha. People say that. I say things that seem to be on that which is written, but it's not beyond that which is written. A lot that I say comes out in written scriptures. A lot that I share reaches beyond the dead letter. In uh, 1 Corinthians, I'll pop the text off and you can go look it up for yourself. Their spirit given word. It says, I have not seen, nor has you heard, nor has entered into the heart of man do a thing which God has prepared for them that love him. But it goes on and says, But God has revealed it by taking this letter of the word, handed down to us, Old and New Testament, taking spirit given truths and revealing it with spirit given words. That comes out of the book of Hebrews. I'll pop the text up on screen again for you. You can go search it for yourself. We have a more sure word of prophecy. Peter's thought comes out in the same text in the Hebrews where it says to the fact that the, the word of God is quick, alive. It's the living word. Sharper than a two-edged sword. Many times people refer to the Bible as the sword of the Lord. Yeah, I know. It's the law, rules. 
It's a two-edged sword that if you swing that letter, independent from God, don't know what you're doing, you're mishandling the letter, as Paul says in 1 Timothy, here's the text, I'll pop up on the screen. They didn't mishandle it, they'll understand its intent. If you swing that sword to cut someone else and judge someone else, oh man, I judge another, you just condemn yourself. It'll swing back and cut you. The letter, the law, was given to bring you to the end of human efforts to save yourself and bring you back to God's promise established before the foundations of the world. And I go at great label to, labor to express this fact that our salvation was based in the finished work of Christ before the foundation of the world. And you can go off search scriptures for this, and you'll see that it's biblically sound. People say, well, I don't say it in your, t in your comments. I can't possibly line my ducks up in a row and, and watch you shoot them all down with your narrow, shallow view of that text. I had those same views at one time, and with the power of the Holy Spirit, not following his teaching, but his leading to the teachings of my father. Remember, he's teaching on his own. He's not speaking to himself, nor am I speaking to myself and my teachings. I had my time of my teaching. Like I said, I got cassette tapes and writings of the past that I was just beginning to understand some of these things and learning to let a lot of it go. You're going to be on that which is written, brother. No, we're taken to its depths. So this isn't usually for the newborn babe in Christ. He'll come to understand that. I have a video that's called, you know, when we first believed. There's a lot of things I didn't understand. I didn't understand this matter of the Trinity, for one. There are people today that still don't believe in the Trinity. Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormons, Islam, none of them believe. Being three distinct personalities, the Father, Son, Spirit, yet one in essence, God. In Christ, God. You know, I'm not going to do that here. There's other videos that bring that out. And a lot of good brothers in Christ can expound upon this thing. Through Christ in them, who just who the Father is, the Son is, and the Spirit is. Three distinct personalities in one being, God. Well, moving on. I did this research for this word Gnostic. Religious Tolerance Gnostic uh, Organization, Gnostic 2, and this is their website. I'll put it, the link in the bottom. You go off read this. Whole, I'm not going to read this whole article. I mean, they get into words. I can't pronounce the dumb words. You know, you got Arabic names. and <laughs> I, 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 I just slurred that poor piece. You can read it for yourself. But this starts off with the Gnostic beliefs. When did they, all this? It's always been there. You had this in a place called Nag Mahani, Humadi, I can't say the name. See definition below. Well, here I scroll down this long, long article. It's 13 pages long in this research. I'm not going to read 13 pages to you. The Nag Hammadi Library, known as, well, I can't pronounce that word, manuscript, or a better word put it as the Gnostic Gospels. We've all heard of that, the Gnostic Gospels. Let me pause here real quick and go down and show you a list of the Gnostic Gospels. So here's the list of the Gnostic Gospels, the prayer of the Apostle Paul. These things you won't find in your Bible. The Apocrypha of James, the Gospel of Thomas, I must have heard of that one. The Treatise of the Resurrection, I mean, and it goes on and on, I won't read them all. You can read them right there. I mean, you're going to run across these books of various people on YouTube or web channels that I get into expounding upon the Gospel of Thomas, you know. I mean, we have the more sure word of prophecy. It's called the canon. And there are those who argue against, uh, like the Catholics, have a lot of the apocryphal books that we don't, as the Protestants, do not have in our Bible, the King James Bible. So, I'm not going to argue that. You, get, you, you go and you'll get all kind of debates on that whether they should have accepted or rejected. And you'll find good Christians you know. They'll be doing research on a certain matter, and they'll, they'll, and they'll refer to an apocryphal book, and they'll say, no, we know that it's not accepted in the canon of Scripture. But for to give a, 
they, they usually get into those books just for the mentality of that day. So this Gnostic teaching has been there for quite a long while, not something new, which comes out here. I'll go back up that research. We found about in 1945, two Egyptian boys found this clay pot, and in the clay pot they found all these uh, uh, Gnostic teachings. And well, they didn't see the value of it. They just took it and sold it for they get, they, they sold it for money. And they, they just took what they found in. People were buying it. Well, here I scroll down to that or up to that. The story of the discovery of the Nag Hammadi Library, 1945, has been described as that ex, exciting as the contents of the find itself. Now, God, in December of that year, two Egyptian brothers found several parsley, parchment in a large earthen vessel while digging for fertilizer around the, well, I can't pronounce that word, caves, some caves near the present-day Hamram Dam in Upper Egypt. There's, there's it shows you on their screen there. That's where they discovered it. Neither originally reported the fine as they sought to make money from the manuscript by selling them individual the interval they could sell it and make a few bucks now the brother's mother burned several of the manuscripts and <laughs> said they're lost forever worried apparently that the papers might have dangerous effects what well, they did you'll see the dangerous effect the devil scarecrow keep away from god's cornfield as a result they came to be known as the nag hamadi library owing to the proximity of the fine uh, uh, to Nag Hammadi. The nearest major settlement appeared only gradually and its stimulus went un unacknowledged until sometime after its initial discovery. Better they never found it. These are apocryphal books. These are things of Gnostics. When we read in scripture what Peter said to Paul about Paul, he says, Our brother Paul have things to say that are hard to be understood. And there are those that twist what he says as they do with the rest of the scriptures. Like I said, before the ink dried on Paul's part letters, parchments, they were already twisting it. The Gnostics already were twisting what the apostles were getting and putting into writing. Twisting it, distorting it. A lot of people, even today you'll find that, there are those, I've run across guys on the web that strongly disbelieve in the writings of Paul and they reject Paul but understand if you reject Paul then you're going to have to reject Peter because Peter saw what Paul said though he found it hard to be understood and he realized that people were twisting his words as they did with the rest of the scripture so I mean these are the times of the Gnostics they've always been there it's nothing new about it they did it to the Old Testament and there are always Gnostics that would do this they're trying to get some special revelation from God that goes beyond to some secret society. So in this research, I found this article where they're talking about the role of the Gnostic. They believe that they alone truly understood Christ's message and that only and that other streams of thought within Christianity had misinterpreted Jesus' mission and sayings. Well, there are people who do that. I didn't need the Gnostics to tell me that. I already knew that before I even knew about this thing of Gnostics. People told me being a Gnostic. You know, I never read their works. All the things I just showed a minute ago, all their apocryphal books, I don't read. I never read them. I don't, you know, maybe you should, brother. You might find the truth. No, I don't want to be disrupted by it. I wait to Christ in me. I have enough problems with my Baptist background and then trying to get into the, Pentecostal, which hated the Baptists, Baptists hated them, and then next thing you know, come outside the framework of the Institute of Church, you know, tapping into some of the New Age thought and idea, find out that they had it all messed up. And I finally raised my hand up in despair and said, Father, what is the truth? And I waited to Christ, the mind of Christ in me, which Paul, no, I go to great labor to show you this. That's the answer, to Christ in you. Now understand, Paul goes so far as to say, let me read that quote I put there. You know, I put down there that this is false. Paul's teaching were nothing of the kind. He strongly shared 
from the mind of Christ in him that what was hidden since time began, the mystery of Christ in you, would be revealed to all. Hear that? All. This mind of Christ said to be all and in all. It wasn't some special knowledge only available to some elite group. This is available. These things are written that you might know if you get a hold of the, 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 the Bible and you allow the Holy Spirit to take that dead letter and bring it alive to living words, it comes alive. But if you get anything beyond the dead letter, people think it's Gnostic teaching. It's not Gnostic teaching. I'm not quoting from the Apocrypha. I'm sharing what Christ has shared to me. And they'll say, well, you are a tried to spirits, brother, whether of God or not of God. You think I don't do that? I've heard God these things that sound like it's a contradiction. That was a contradiction to a dead religion. Teachings of forefathers, they only saw a thing in part. Half truths, sometimes out and out lies. So moving on, it says Gnostics. Knowledge to them was an intellectual exercise. It was not a passive understanding of some aspect of spirituality. Rather, knowledge had a redeeming and liberating function to help the individual break free of bondage to the world. Now you read that like, what? No. All that I've shared in my videos and writings debunked this statement. The Greek seeks wisdom. The Jew sought a sign. That comes out, I, I bring, express upon, a beat, you know, build upon that text that Paul gave. You know, I'm not going to get trapped in the text here. I got enough videos out, and if you have questions, put your questions here, and I'll point you to the video where I expound upon it. And when you get done viewing all these videos that I'll point you to, show me in what I said that it's Gnostic teachings. Coming from Apocrypha, or some new religious idea that Paul Woodward and his, and his pea brain made up, coming up with a whole new religion. I'm not doing that. And it gets in about deity. Now, Gnostic teaching about deity, if you want to get confused, go read their definition and idea of God. You know? You know, you hear it. When you hear their idea of God, it sounds more like the Jehovah's Witness. It sounds like the Mormons. It sounds like Islam. And it sounds like those of the New Age. Where do you think they get these stuff? From devils and demons, doctrines of devils and demons, teaching all of them. Going independent from Christ, they will even say sometimes, it's the Christ in me. It's not the Christ I know. Okay. The Supreme Father God, or Supreme God of Truth, is remote from human affairs. He came to life, people. And he's unknowable and undetectable by human senses. Senses. You know? God, the carnal mind will never see this thing. But you have the mind of Christ in you. You have a quickened human spirit. It's not by the soul cut off from God that you're ever going to understand any of these things. So, I mean, this is like a half-truth. There's some truth to what that's saying, but I don't agree with it. It's a half-truth. It's not, you've got to be the whole truth, not the truth to help me God. No, the supreme father or supreme God of truth is remote from human affairs. He is unknowable and undetectable by human senses. He, she, oh God, he, she created uh, of supernatural but finite beings called aeons. Now, I didn't understand what they meant by that. So, I look up the word aeons. You see the word, see the definition below. In Gnosticism, it's one of a class of power or beings conceived as emanating from the supreme being and performing various functions, the operation of the universe. There's a higher God, then a lower God beyond that God, then a lower God beyond that God, a lower God beyond that. That's their stupid ideas. Well, let me read on. Oh, my God. Now, we really got things off. It's not biblical. One of these was Sophia. You hear that? Sophia called. A virgin who in turn gave birth to a defective, to an end a defective, hear that? Inferior creator God, also known as, can't pronounce the word, 
means public craftsman in Greek. This lower god is sometimes called Yadabalth or some kind of crazy name there from Arabic words meaning uh, begetter of the heavens. Since they, they said that this is Jehovah, the God of the Hebrew Scriptures. Oh, no, it's not. He is portrayed as the creator of the earth and its life form. He's viewed by Gnostics as a fundamentally evil, jealous, rigid, lacking in compassion, and prone to genocide. <laughs> Good God in heaven. You know when people get these ideas? You get that from people. You know, these are so-called good Christians that have been influenced by Gnostic teachings. And they say such a thing. The, old, the God in the Old Testament was evil. And the God in the New Testament is a good God. There's only one God. So it is the merge, or whatever you want to pronounce it, thinks that he is supreme. His pride and incompetence has resulted in the sorry state of the world of you know, the blaming God and in the blind ignorance condition of most of mankind. So it's God's fault. James addresses that. Let no man say when he's tempted, he's tempted of God because God's not tempted with evil or tempted he, he or he tempted any man. But man of his own lust and tries to draw away and when lust is conceived, it manifests sin. And when sin is finished, it manifests death. You can't blame God, though we like to. I mean, there's too much. To, everything I teach in my videos, I'm not going to try to do that here. I'm just going to try to address this accusation made against me. I'm a Gnostic. If you take the time to view the videos I put out there, show me in those videos where I'm a Gnostic. Show me. Well, I don't have to read your videos, brother. I always saw by one little word here that you're a Gnostic. That's called unfairness. Prejudging. Most people that have taken the time to view my videos would laugh at a guy like that. Hey, Woodward, Paul Woodward is far from being a Gnostic, people. Oh, God. And then you get to the point where you, you know, they label you all kinds of things. Moving on, you'll find out my videos debunk all these stupid statements here. Duality of spirit and body. Spirit is of divine origin and good. Now catch this. The body is inherently earthy and evil. You know, Epicureans got that way. They used to flag the flag, uh, cat and nine tail, beat their bodies, and they would, you know, Severe treatment of the body, Paul warned about. They were doing that in his day. The body is inherently earthy and evil. Gnostic were hostile to the physical world, to matter and the human body. But they believed that trapped them in some, pe some people's body, <laughs> some people's body, were the sparks of divine divinity or seeds of light that was supplied to you humanity by Sophia. Some. Christ is all and in all. The mind of Christ. His reign is fallen upon the just and the unjust. You'll be without excuse. Well, I didn't get this. The divine spark. He lit every man to come in this world and they twist that poor verse to hell. He subjected the world to futility and death and decay and dying. But he did that in Hope. Christ in you to hope. Oh God, make that connection. Don't see that as Gnostic teaching. I almost said it. Get your head out of the hole in the ground. Now catch this. Salvation. A person attains salvation by learning secret knowledge of their spiritual essence. A divine spark of light or spirit. They then have the opportunity to escape from the prison of their bodies of death. Their soul can ascend to be united with the supreme God at the time of their death. Gnostics 
divine, divided humanity into three groups. The spiritual, who would be saved irrespective of their behavior while on earth. Now, you can see all kind of teachings all on that. The soulish, who would be saved if they followed the Gnostic path. And the third, the carnal, who are hopelessly lost. I'm not going to here try to point you to the videos I got. I even mentioned one time I said to a guy that had 430 videos and by the flick of his finger dismissed it all. That's Gnostic teaching. Never viewed a one of them, but a flick of his finger labeled me a Gnostic. God, that's unfair. You'll pay for that. Evil. They did not look upon the world as having been created perfect. Now, hear this. Go to the book of Genesis. On six days, after six days, he, could, he pronounced every day, good, good, good. And on the seventh day, he said, it is very good. So before the fall of Adam, had he not fallen, I bring this out in my videos, and had went to the tree of life, not to the tree of death, knowledge of good and evil, that the devil had him go to, and cut him off from God, he would have went to the tree of life, and this world would have been a world without end. It would have been an expression, as the prayer of Jesus said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It would have been an expression of an eternal kingdom on earth, the kingdom of heaven expressed with no beginning and end. It would have been a world without end. But because of the fall of Adam, this world had to have a beginning and it ends with a new heaven, new earth, new to us, where what was as originally expressed by God to be expressed here in a material world would go on forever. Well, here's what they did. They, they did not look upon the world as being created perfectly and then having degenerated as a result of the sin of Adam and Eve. Rather, the world was seen as being evil at the time of its origin because it had been created by an inferior God. God, God in heaven. What a twist of the word of God. And they call me a Gnostic. I am not saying that. How dare you? Now hear this. The snake. <laughs> the story of Adam and Eve in the garden. And the snake. Some Gnostic sex honored the snake. <laughs> God, hear this. They did not view the snake as a seducer who led the first couple to a sinful behavior. Rather, they saw him, it, as a liberator who brought knowledge to Adam and Eve by convincing them to eat of the tree of knowledge good and even thus to become fully human. Snake symbol. He gives us some stupid word, I can't pronounce that word. An ancient symbol depicting a serpent or dragon swallowing its own tail and forming a circle. It's been used to represent many things over the ages, but it most generally symbolizes ideas of senility, unity, or infinity. In Gnosticism, this sort of represent or symbolizes eternality and the soul of the world. Oh. Now here's a Gnostic view of Christ. I asked you, view my videos. See if this is how I view Christ. Jesus, our Lord. This is their screwed up ideas. The role of the Redeemer in Gnostic belief is heavily debated at this time. They're never going to come understand it. Gnostics seem to look upon Christ as a revealer or liberator rather than a savior or judge. His purpose was to spread knowledge which would free individuals from the, this lower God's control and allow them to return to their spiritual home with the supreme God at death. Some Gnostic groups promoted, I can't pronounce the diocesan, the belief that Christ was pure spirit and then he had a phantom body. Joe, witness do that. 
Jesus just appeared to be human to his followers. <laughs> it was really Casper the Ghost, yeah. <laughs> they reasoned that a true emissary from the Supreme God would not have been overcome by the evil of the world. Remember, they thought the body was evil, so he couldn't overcome into a body. And to have to suffer and die. These beliefs were considered heresy by many non Gnostic Christians. Some Gnostics believe that Christ's resurrection occurred at or before Jesus' death on the cross. <laughs> they defined his resurrection as occurring when his spirit was liberated from his body. Many Gnostics believe that Jesus had both male and female disciples. Oh, God. Okay, let me end on this. The universe. This is divided into three kingdoms. They got some weird idea of the kingdom. I got a whole video on about the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of heaven. To find out, I don't teach their stupid stuff. The earthly cosmos. The earth is the center of the universe and it's composed of the world that we know of and an underworld. It's surrounded by air and by seven concentric heavenly spheres, one of which is... The, the moon, Venus, Mercury, Sun, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Although the planet Uranus is visible to the naked eye, it was not re recognized as a planet in ancient times. You know, it's astrology. Within uh, this spirit lived demonic uh, tyrannical entities called uh, Acherons. Beyond them lies paradise, which contains the tree of life, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and the flaming turning sword of Genesis 3.24. Beyond paradise was the spirit of the fixed stars, divided into twelve signs of the zodiac. The intermediate kingdom is composed of an inner blue circle of darkness and an outer yellow ring of light. Within these rings is a spirit, which is the realm of Sophia, <laughs> the kingdom of God consists of two spears and out of one of the unknowable supreme God in a ring of the sun. Okay, that's just some basic ideas of Gnostic teachings. And I'm saying to you, I challenge you, go and view my videos. Show me where I have been expounding Gnostic teachings. In ending, let me say this. Do not allow the devil's scarecrow of these Gnostics, Mormons, Jehovah's Witness, Islam, New Age, or any other teaching that gives you half-truths and lies. It'll keep you from the very fact that the devil does not want you to discover of the mystery that did him in, Christ in you. The hope of restored lost glory of Adam, hidden there since time began, hidden from the devil, so if he knew this, he would not have crucified Jesus, which was the manifestation of what was in the mind of God since the dawn of human history before the beginning. Christ was slain, offered his life for our life and it will retrieve us and bring us back, reconciled, back to the mind of God. Not through these crazy teachings and lies and half-truths. So I hope you got something out of this. God bless you.